Hey gang, I wanted to, I wanted to talk to you today about What If 1936, the game that, uh, Ty Bomber game from Counterfact Magazine, I think it's number, let's see, four? Yeah, issue four, this guy. Now, I have already maybe posted something on Facebook, I'm not sure. It was while I was away, so I was kind of tired and wacky, not, not really 100% there, I don't think. I'm not really 100% here right now, but I want to talk about this and get this game kind of done with, moved on from. Uh, I've only had one play of this, so I think it's something that I would want to play again with a friend, for sure. Uh, it's got some curious things going on with it, and I'm a little reluctant to jump into you know, kind of review uh, mode, uh, I would, I think I'm more interested in just kind of talking a little bit about the game and see if that makes some, helps you make some sense out of whether or not something you should try, right? So for a start, obviously it's a magazine game. What does that mean? That means that uh, we have lower expectations in terms of depth of play, uh, quality of components and all the rest of it. Or we can still hold uh, magazine games to the same standards as we expect from any th any other game, right? Which is what I tend to do. I tend to think that if you're going to publish a magazine game, and you know it's going to be published in the format, you know, the, the separate rules and one counter sheet and one map, you still owe, owe it to me to get it right. Now, the good news is this game gets it mostly right. There's uh, a very clear and concise set of rules. There are only two or three little things that I, I had niggles with that I really wasn't sure I was doing things right with. There are some setup errors that, to me, were frustrating to start, to kick off what's ostensibly, uh, you know, seven pages of rules, right? And so you get into this thing and you read the rules, you go, oh, awesome, this looks great. So you start setting up and go, what the, what the what, right? What the heck? Uh, I've, written, I've got notes on that, and I think the last time I did the video, I said I was going to talk about it. I've just unpacked. I can't find my notes. So I've got them here somewhere. We'll go, we'll, I'll put it up on the blog at uh, bigboardgaming.com, whatever it is. You'll get to read about it there, and I'll post a few pictures. And bits. So let's talk about the game. So it's uh, set in 1936, funnily enough. It's a what if, uh, where you were, you know, I guess in essence, Hitler is. Uh, arrested or put to one side and it's really all about the nationalist and the socialist uh, uh, parties or groups inside of Germany uh, splitting up the country and the major cities where they're active and then it's when do the when do the Soviets come in do the French intervene and if so how do they intervene and uh, once the French get to Berlin then it's all over right so you're really playing the the nationalists and the uh, socialists with the Soviet intervention and subsequent activation of the, the Polish and the Czechs or something like that. So, uh, <clears throat> there are a couple of uh, fun things with this game in that you can initiate terror operations in a city that you think you might lose. And what that, that costs you a victory point, and you put the little chit down, what that means is the next time you go to play, uh, next time, if you do lose that city, when you go to recover it, the defense value is automatically zero. So you've kind of preempted the uh, the value of the defense by by putting conducting this terror up. That costs you a victory point. And as the Germans, you probably don't want to be doing too much of that because you start with an advantage and you can end with an advantage if you don't do terribly much and don't lose very much. So at first, you know, your tendency to play to as you set up these games, and each game is going to set up a little bit, uh, a little bit differently because it's an, uh, you're alt alternating which cities you put a chit down and which city becomes nationalist and which city becomes socialist. Each game might be a little bit different. <coughs> um, so you've got this map and you've got these two tracks. Doody doody do. Let's go here. Two tracks here. This is where you roll a die to see which track the uh, French come down. Uh, there's a one big French core counter that has no value on it. It's just an, it's an abstraction of the army, and it's moving to Berlin. And once it gets to Berlin, it's gonna in, it's gonna do its thing, right? Uh, Trying, it's intervening in uh, in the action, so that there's no combat. 
and it blows away anything that's uh, in its way, as the case may be. And it's a randomized roll for movement, so it may move, um, I think, zero. Um, it can move one, two, or three hexes a turn. And that's one of the one of the challenges I have with the game is that every unit rolls for movement every turn, and so you've got to roll a die and do this division and work out whether it's one, two, or three movement points that it gets uh, in the turn, and you then go and do your combat, and then the combat, uh, the defense of the garrisons in the city, you roll for them as well. You roll to see what their defensive value is going to be. So there's a lot of die rolling going on in this game, and I'm not sure that I really felt like it was necessary. It does add a little bit of suspense to the to the game, not knowing what the garrison's going to be this time. It does add some suspense to the game when you're rolling for all the Soviets that come in, come in along this, uh, this river line here uh, and invade Poland. You know, are they going to are they going to get all the way up to the north to capture Berlin or capture some cities and bump up the victory conditions, uh, the victory point track? And and I, when I was playing it, I really felt like the Soviets had no no chance uh, because they came in quite late in the game, and so it was pretty much a lay down for the Germans. So the Germans basically decided to sit back and not do anything else for the rest of the game. They kind of just wanted to hold their positions. So they moved their forces their forces around which they had to roll for every turn, where, how many movement points they had. But you moved your uh, army, so you've got regular armies that have a one, two, uh, one attack, two defense type of thing, and a question mark for, for, for uh, a question mark for the uh, movement rate. And uh, then you have these garrison forces that have uh, zero attack and then a, a randomized defense number and then the same on both sides and they obviously have a zero for the uh, for the I'm sorry I'm all the way over here I'm not doing a very good job with the camera I've got the camera facing for a change and of course I can't focus so uh, <coughs> so these things uh, take a little bit of getting used to and there are some modifiers you know you have this uh, uh, mobile artillery brigade thing that can uh, move you one column to the right there are some horrible uh, uh, combat results on this table that you don't want to take chances with where, uh, you know, the, uh, the attacker eliminated can suck, duh, uh, but attacker, uh, it's called, what is it called, what's the result called, AS, I forget what it's called now, it's like suspended or something like that or sustained, uh, you, you, you know, nothing happens, no result. Uh, and you go, you, uh, you've got these, Got this fairly deadly at this end of the table, uh, combat results table, and then it gets pretty, pretty deadly at the other end too. But you're not, you're. In, I don't know why even it goes up to plus twelve. I can't see how you could get plus twelve in this game. Um, so it's curious. It's interesting. It's a what if. So the suspension of disbelief is there. That the the, the historical summation and uh, setting, uh, the setup, really lets you feel like, okay, I could see how this could happen, and then, you know, how is this all gonna come together? All that works, it kinda lets me down a little bit with the gameplay, but it's hard to say exactly if, if it's the gameplay or if it's just my lack of appreciation of the system. So, it's a game that's worth taking a look at, is what I'm gonna say. Uh, it's, if you're interested in Ty's designs, and there's clearly his, uh, I don't know if he wrote all the rules himself or not, but his rule writing has certainly changed a lot from the Command Magazine days, and uh, it's a lot clearer, it's a lot more, con it's a lot more concise, it's a lot more succinct, and you're, the rules, you'll be up and playing this rule in less, this rule, this game, in less, less time than it took you to watch this video, I will say that. Uh, particularly if they issue some errata for the, the few handful of little uh, uh, hex setup notations that are wrong. As is, rules as written, I know that there's already some errata out on the, on the website from one small step or whatever, but I'm just telling you that there's a couple of other things in this that are not accurate. Anyway, so it's worth having a look at. I will say too, just a by the by, Counterfact Magazine and their website, you need to start visiting their website. A lot of very cool content is coming out on their site. And these articles are in here are really, really cool. And the articles, 
and the thinking that's going in here and what's going on to the website has changed my mind about this magazine. I was going to ditch this after this, uh, this edition, after my subscription runs out, which I think is next copy, but I'm going to be re-upping because I'm really enjoying uh, reading the articles in Counterfact Magazine. I highly encourage you to get it. Even if you just get the magazine, it's well worth getting. Uh, skip the games, that's fine. You know, Some games are great, some aren't. Some aren't. This is interesting. Uh, TBD, whether or not it uh, it is going to be a classic, but uh, it, it's it's up there with uh, as a solid a solid game that's worth a look at if you want something to do on a wet Sunday or something. How's that? All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.